Things are going to happen in your life. Everything that's happening to you is God is processing you. What happened in my life was getting where I've gotten to today and where I'm even headed to, I had to be tough. To really understand the value of money, I had none. To just appreciate simple things, what I'm gonna eat today, he sent me through a trial of being homeless for three years. All of that that I did not appreciate, I understand it now. And even though I did not understand or appreciate the route he took me on, it was the route I had to go on. You can stop complaining about life is unfair to me. No, it ain't. It's just life. Life isn't fair. Life just is. So we, can, we can't even deal with what's fair. But you have to go on. You have to find the strength from somewhere. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? Don't go around telling people what your story is. 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. They say, I'm glad that didn't happen to me. <laughs> so I had to let that go. All of us have experienced some tragedy, and if we haven't, we will. You can permit it, let it hold you down, or you can decide, I'm not going to let that happen to me. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. Engage in this one, indulge in it even slightly, and you might as well forget the future because it's going to forget you. Complaining, crying, a Bible word called murmuring. See, that'll ace your future. It's a deadly disease. If you don't think it's bad, ask the children of Israel. Story says, children of Israel were slaves. God performed a series of dazzling miracles and got them out. Remember the story? Heading for the promised land. Tragedy of the story? They never got there. Reason. From day one, they started to complain. I need you to hear me today. Make sure you take good notes. The Bible says, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained. Moses and Aaron said, y'all ain't complaining to us. Y'all complaining to God. This ain't got nothing to do with us. Have you lost your mind? and the whole congregation are complaining. Just stupidity, stupidity. I told you before, sin stupefies you. You gonna sit here and tell God, oh God, so we could have died at the hands in the land of the Egypt. Uh, when we sat by the pots of meat and, and when we ate bread to the full, <laughs> you were slaves. You mad at God because number one, you mad at God for something you did? Why are you complaining? I made the decision not to listen to my grandma. I made the decision to despise my father, who wasn't my biological father, but decided to come in my life and give me his last name. I walked out of that house. I, got, I dropped out of school. I can't be mad that I'm homeless. I had a house to live in. I had food to eat. I made up in my mind that the laws and the rules that they set for me, that I didn't want them. I look, here's Israel now. They mad at God for some mess they didn't got themselves into. God sat there and took care of you for 40 years and this is the kind of conversation you having with God. You're the one made those decisions. You're the one decided that you weren't gonna return a faithful tithe and offer to the Lord and now you tripping about where your money go. You're the one decided to eat and drink whatever you want, when you want, then you got sick and now you mad at God. You decided to do it the way you want to do it. Now all of a sudden you mad at God and the consequences that you brought about yourself. Now it's God's fault. Uh, we sat by pots of meat and we ate bread until we were full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. <laughs> You're trying to kill us with hunger? We had pots of meat in Egypt. We, we was full with bread. You got us out here in the wilderness. I got y'all out here. I was the one that left Egypt to come save y'all. I left Egypt because I saw what Israel was going through. And I gave up everything to be a part of this Egyptian journey. And now y'all looking at, 
The same people you help is the same people that will stab you in your back. Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt. If you was going to kill us, why you ain't kill us in Egypt? Just stupidity. You were slaves. They gave you the scraps. They only gave you food so you can be full and energized too to do their work. That's stupidity. Egypt almost destroyed you and your whole lineage. They griped about the water. They whined and griped about the food. They griped about the leadership. They whined and cried because it was too far, too cold, too miserable. I mean, they whined and, whined and cried for years. Finally, God said, I've had it, trip canceled. The story says they died in the desert, never got to the promised land. Which I think means two things. Indulge in this long enough, you get your future canceled. And I guess it also means even God himself can only take so much. Listen to me, young people, do me a favor. Don't go to your friend's house and start comparing what your parents told you to do to what they're doing. Don't do that. Don't, don't say, my friends get to have this kind of fun. They get to do that. And when we at home, we don't get to do this. and we Don't, get, don't compare yourself to Egypt. When God puts something special on your life, he's put special laws and rules on your life. Not to hurt you, but to protect the purpose that's on your life. So for those of us who fuss and fight with our parents, who only have our best interest in heart, you mad at your mama because she's not going to let you eat all the candy in the world? All you see is candy. You ain't thinking about your teeth. Did you miss what I just said? Do you understand that when the devil created sin, that he put sweetness with it? If sin was bitter, we wouldn't do it. But everything that tastes good to you ain't good for you. Everything that's sweet to the taste ain't sweet to the soul. That as an adult, I'm super successful now because I finally understand your parents are not trying to hurt you by making you go to school. Your parents aren't trying to hurt you because they're telling you you shouldn't eat this and you shouldn't eat that. A few years ago, I was flying to one of our events with some of our staff and we were on a smaller plane and there was one seat on each side of the aisle. I wanted to open my tray table so I could write some notes. The table was in the side of the plane. And I pulled and pulled, but I couldn't get it open. My friend was sitting across the aisle. His looked exactly the same. He pulled his straight out. I went back to mine and I pulled, I struggled. I thought, I'm going to get this thing open if it's the last thing that I do. Wouldn't budge. Another staff member pulled and pulled. It was stuck. About that time, I looked up, and over the window, there was a sign with big, bold letters. It said, not a tray table, emergency exit only. I didn't laugh like you, but anyway. Sometimes what we're frustrated about is God keeping us from real frustration. If God opened every door we ask him to open, brought every person we begged him to bring, we wouldn't reach our destiny. When it doesn't work out my way, it may not seem fair, but I've learned God is smarter than I am. He can see things we can't see. He knows what he's doing. You don't understand why God won't answer the prayer. Why that guy at work that you like so much hasn't even noticed you. You've worn your best outfits, your best perfume. He acts like he's dead. Maybe it's because God can see something you can't see. Maybe under his shirt is an emergency exit only sign. God has your best interests at heart. If he's not giving you what you want, that means he has something better.